James and Jisu were able to take the time they have been able to take to meet with our students. And I know it meant some of you waiting a little longer today. I hope you were enjoying the refreshments in the back. It was so worth it to see the look on folks' faces when uh, our VIPs came in the room and the engagement with students and faculty was tremendous. I would like to call up the MC for this event now, please. And welcome, Member of Parliament, for the marvelous Scarborough Central, uh, Roxanne James. Oh. Ms. James. Oh. Thank you, and good morning. And uh, certainly welcome to everybody. It was a fantastic tour, by the way. So, I am Roxanne James. I'm the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Service and the member of the Scarborough Center. Thank you for the introduction. What uh, some of you may not know is I was actually also a student, a part time student, uh, without disclosing my age, it was just a very long time ago. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> As a member of Parliament for Scarborough Center, I can tell you that Centennial College has earned its reputation as a leading Canadian college through the quality programs, the students that attract, so me as well, okay. <laughs> and the uh, I just have to feel better, so I'm going to start over. To position Canada for future excellence. After the tour this morning, I know that this institution understands that research industry collaboration is key to achieving our province's full potential. Canadian college graduates in science, technology, and engineering are few in jobs and growth in our economy. Centennial plays an essential role in assuring our young people in Toronto and the region have successful, bright careers to look forward to. And I want to thank you for your contribution to the community in this regard. It is my pleasure to introduce the first in charge of leading the science and technology file for our government, the Honorable Ed Holder. Ed was first elected to the House of Commons in 2008 and was appointed Minister of State for Science and Technology in 2014. He's been a member of several committees, including the Standing Committee on Industry, Science and Technology, which prepared him very well for this role. Prior to being elected, Ed was president of Stevenson and Hunt Insurance Company, Ed Brokers one of Canada's largest insurance firms. His commitment to public service in his community is extensive, having been involved with 58 community organizations during his lifetime. This includes serving as president of the board of the London Chamber of Commerce, chair of the board of the London Convention Centre, and member of Western University's Board of Governors. He was also responsible for saving Sir Frederick Banting's Memorial Cross from public auction. Ed has lived in London, Ontario for over 30 years. He and his wife Judith have one daughter and two lovely granddaughters. It is now my honor and my privilege. Please join me in welcoming to the podium my colleague and good friend, Canada's Minister of State for Science and Technology, the Honorable Ed. And uh, thanks very much. That was uh, very kind. You know, it's rather interesting. Uh, you may not know this, actually, well, only a few of you do, but I was actually, uh, unlike Roxanne, I did not go to Centennial College. However, I was accepted at Centennial College uh, from uh, after grade 12. Now, since that's before most of you were born, I should tell you, back in my time, there was what they call grade 12 and grade 13. Some of you might recall that, most of them. But at that time, I was president of my school uh, in Toronto, Melbourne Collegiate. And the term as a president of, of the high school was half of grade 12 and half of grade 13. So I felt obligated after I received my acceptance at Centennial College in marketing and business marketing to uh, tell my high school principal as the, as the school president. So I said, uh, I've got good news and bad news, uh, Principal Hogarth. And he said, well, what's the good news? I said, good news, well, good news is, is that I've been accepted to St. General College uh, for the marketing business. He said, oh, great. So what's the bad news? He said, I said, well, I'm finishing and I'm leaving after grade 12. So he looked at me and he said, well, no, you're not. And I said, well, I thought he was. He said, no, you're not. And I said, well, how come? He said, you made a commitment. You're the president of the high school. You still have six more months in your grade 13 term. Uh, and you have to finish your term. So as things happen, I stayed, uh, I felt that sense of obligation, and, and Principal Hogarth was, was quite right about that. And uh, so for some reason, it's funny how things happen. For some reason, then I went, uh, I went to Western, and 
got a degree in philosophy, and with a degree in philosophy, you can go into either insurance or politics. <laughs> <laughs> and I did both. Um, but they both turned out okay, I must say. And, 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 but you get very close to your alma mater, and it was really interesting because I met the cobbler and his kids today in one of our projects right here. And when we talked about this great idea that they've got with uh, using the, the, these unique codes uh, to uh, to establish your uh, uh, like this kind of Dr. Schultz project I'm not here to promote them, but others to, to understand your pressure points for your feet. And we spoke to these two uh, gentlemen, and what was very compelling was they, and I said, why are you here? And they said, because we're both centennial friends. And I think that makes a great statement. I don't know, please, please, please stand up so we can honor you. So, it's a bad it's not a but, but the good news about this, by the way, is, is that not only are they bringing their business opportunities here, but other students get to, to, to learn from you. And then when you make a lot of money, we're going to take more of it from you for the, for the college, because that's how that works. It's time, talent, and treasure. And that's what you're sharing now with the school. So we honor you and, and, and all of you that are making it in street. It's a great school. And uh, I was so honored to be here with F.P. Roxanne James and F.P. Cambridge, just uh, two uh, great friends, and uh, and I just appreciate it so much. So, um, merci à tous, the vote was on CC as media, and I'd like to thank my colleagues, Roxanne and uh, Cornelia. Uh, Roxanne is the member of parliament, as it was indicated, uh, for Starter Center, and parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. You know, she stands up in the House of Commons. She's smart, she's tough, and she knows what she's talking about. There's no men's attest to be in the in parliament, but if there was one, she would be at the top of the class, because she is extremely clever, extremely smart, and the caliber of individual that the Scarborough Center brought to the House of Commons in 2011 has been extraordinary. And when you get someone of her caliber coming in and her role, in the House of Commons, it means you're proud to be a member of Parliament, and you've been a great member. And Roxanne, I just want to salute you and say thank you for your service to Canada. Well done. <laughs> now, in a few moments, I'm going to formally introduce uh, the real reason we're here today to uh, to speak to Cornelia Chisu, the member of Parliament for Pickering Scarberries, who was also elected in 2011. But more about uh, him in a moment, I'd rather talk about me if you allow me. It's such an honor to be back home in Toronto. I was born in uh, this great uh, city, and uh, for this great announcement about fostering industry and college collaboration and graduates and things. You know, what's, what I've got a, a very clear sense, and Chris was really clear on this with me the last couple of times we've met, uh, and uh, I mean, now today, is that there's a real strong sense of research that I'm taking place right here that focuses on innovation and problem solving technologies. With real practical relevance, I noticed particularly today in commercial applications. What I appreciate it as well is that there are definitely, definitely goals and values that you have here that I'd like to believe are shared by our government. And so the students we met and the businesses that we've interacted with that partnered here at Centennial uh, to create the wearable, interactive, and mobile technologies access center in healthcare, known uh, familiarly as WinTech. You know, what we find from that is that innovation is actually key to Canada's ongoing competitiveness and prosperity. Innovative R&D, which for me is an essential feature of a modern economy, needs to bring knowledge and discoveries. It revolutionizes our lives through advancements in health and technology, and it can provide fresh perspectives for business and public policy. You know, it's interesting. Uh, when I left uh, Scarborough at age 10 to live in Southern California, Five years as a teenager. Uh, you know, we, I was in Southern California when they, in the 60s when they started the technology. I used to code things on zeros and ones and beat them into a, beat them into a, a, program, a programming uh, system. But that was in the 60s. You know, I'm old enough to remember black and white television with rabbit ears. That's how it started. And, uh, you know, you talk about microwaves. Uh, I mean, we didn't even have the toaster oven when I was a kid. And uh, I'm not sure enough to remember when the Trump new police want to stand the top. So, and I was there. So, the point being that, you know, uh, it's, it's incredible how technology and innovation has really taken shape and taken its form. And why I'm so glad to be here today. Well, I'm sure it's developed my movement because, you know, I've been in the sense of the economy modern, 
é o regimento de melhor conhecimento, ele vem de procurar. Ele cura o ensino de gás, o passe, a independência, a santa fé, a libertação do filho. E tudo, igualmente, ao fazer da perspectiva de dito, o regime de essa fé é o responsável de produzir. Now, for all those reasons and more, I've got to be strengthening the public-private research and commercialization as critical partnerships. And we saw so much of that today. For this reason, I want to be able to go to the government. And I think that the enforcement of the partnership could be created on the field of research, and the police of the second, and the government. Because these kinds of partnerships are a win-win. They give the private sector access to expert knowledge and resources that you see here at Centennial. They need those to develop new ideas and refine them, their products and their services. There's an added bonus here. Bonus, these partnerships often involve small and medium-sized businesses. You know, it's interesting, we were talking earlier in the, in the introductory uh, session, I uh, think it's something I'm going today. My wife's a serial entrepreneur with four businesses, small businesses, and I've always been an entrepreneur putting a politics later in life. But what you find is that small business, not government, are the true job creators. And often in, in, in business, you lack the resources to realize your true potential as a driver of innovation. Are we blessed to have something in college that they're doing that and working with business? Partnerships also provide valuable industry experience to a new generation of researchers and highly skilled workers who are going to be our business leaders and well, I find that profoundly so. You know, recently, uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper delivered on the government's commitment to provide an updated science, technology, and innovation strategy. The strategy is called Seizing Canada's Moment. We announced it in Markham in December, uh, just a few months ago. And it provides a vision and a roadmap for strengthening Canada's position as a global leader in scientific research and harnessing greater Canadian research and development to increase jobs, increases prosperity, and improves the quality of life of all Canadians. Because first, by focusing on people, we develop and attract and retain the best researchers and business managers to keep Canada at the forefront of innovation. Next, by investing in knowledge in the form of research and infrastructure, we will strengthen support for excellence across the spectrum of discovery-driven applied research activities. And finally, by fostering innovation, we will build greater partnerships amongst business and the research communities of community companies for you. When you know, talk to the cobbler over here today, and he's going to take this project across the province, across the country, across the world, that's the moment it's said. We applaud you again. Folks, uh, Economic Action Plan 2014 represented a new down payment towards the objective of a new strategy. And, and I want to pay tribute to my dear friend, Billy Chimplay. He announced an Economic Action Plan 2014 with the Prime Minister $1.5 billion of legacy new funding to support in, uh, internships in high demand fields and further investments in business incubators and accelerators. The plan is to the beauty of technology that are more contributing to the progressive objective of the strategy. They are providing the time to develop the new point in France, the year of the law, for the fund excellence in the research of the country of Canada, for the people of the size of the world. Apporte de demande à des investissements, à des scénarios dans les incubateurs, etc. dans les pays. Now, these investments build on our government's long history of significant support for science, technology, and innovation in Canada. And you may not have noticed, but since 2006, our investment in Canada's research, science, and technology, that leadership has totaled some $11 billion in new investments. That is huge. Now, with targeted investments and strategic support, we're strengthening our economy and we're enabling college and industry partners to turn ideas into jobs and growth and better quality of life for all of us. So that brings me to my reason here today. My kid Brett mother would say, why use 10 words when 100 can do the same thing? So you're, you're becoming a part of that today. So just this Wednesday, I announced that our government will invest more than $40 million to help businesses across Canada including here in Scarborough, to gain access to the research know-how of our colleges, to help colleges obtain new equipment, to support new research. So I'm going to invite my colleague, Cornelius Chieser, who's a great champion for this region, to tell us how this investment is going to impact Centennial College right here in Scarborough. And as I do, I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. 
I, I like this technique because we can kind of talk eye to eye and it's really nice and we can buy something three quarter and we can push through as much as we can. But unlike me, he's actually quite educated. I have a degree in philosophy as I go through, but he's actually really clever. He's the other thing. By the way, for all of us that have general degrees in humanities and arts, uh, I, I appreciate you and I come from your world. But Cornelia comes from a different world, a nice one. He's a professional engineer and a retired engineer from the Canadian Forces. If he was going to tell you anything, uh, about what we saw today. I'm going to steal a bit of his thunder. I'm going to steal an announcement. Uh, what is uh, Frederick? Frederick, come on up. Where's the dean? Come on up here. Now, Frederick, I'm going to present you with a trophy. Now, you've already gotten it, by the way. I just like photo ops. So, this is the. Now, this is. It's true. So, what we've got here is a picture of Frederick Brunner. So, this is the picture of Frederick Brunner. So, this is the picture of Frederick Brunner. So, this is the picture of Frederick Brunner. Now, by the way, this is for the School of Engineering, Technology, and Applied Science. This is the tech fair that just happened. Now, imagine this. 30 different student competitors, all capstone projects. Uh, incredible, uh, incredible effort. And Frederick, can I ask you, please, just announce what, before I, I give you the trophy, just announce what the trophy award was given for. Would you please? Yeah, the trophy uh, was awarded to the best uh, project in the School of Engineering, Technology, and Applied Science at our tech fair. Happened a couple of days ago. So it's a real achievement for the students and the school. So let's go in front of the podium here. We're going to do this because we take their shots this way. Please. This is the trophy. May I, with great pride, for the second time, present you, <laughs> present you with this great trophy and acknowledge of the tremendous work that you do in research, technology, innovation. You all going to be very proud. And to the students, yes. you make us extremely proud. Hats, hats off to all of you. Big hand for everyone here. <laughs> Don't stop. <It's> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But this is all about Cornelia, but we just digressed a little bit here. Um, I told you that, uh, that Cornelia is a uh, professional engineer. What I didn't tell you, though, is that he's a retired uh, major between courses in engineering, uh, uh, as part of the engineers. You know that he's the member of parliament for Pickering Starker East, where he's lived for more than uh, 30 years with his wife Cecilia and their daughter Martha. Uh, elected in 2011 with Roxanne James. It, it just speaks to the caliber of individuals that you have sent uh, to the House of Commons. He's a member of the Official Languages Act because he can learn to speak Romanian. That would be kind of his third uh, official language, I trust. And he's part of the National Defense Committee and is on the Executive Committee of Canada NATO's Parliamentary Association, the Canada Europe Parliamentary Association, and the Canadian Group of the Interparliamentary Union. In addition to all of this, he holds a number of other executive and membership positions. I'm just a huge host of parliamentary friendship groups because that's the way that he is. One of the most engaging members of parliament, one of the most thoughtful members of parliament, certainly one of the most intelligent members of parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. I would ask you to join me and welcome me to the, to the stage, Premier Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Ed, for the nice words that you put forward uh, about me. I just want to mention that uh, with uh, Mr. Ted Arthur, it can be uh, 25 years or 26 years ago in the same Master of Engineering program uh, doing uh, studies and engineering physics. So it is a great pleasure to see him again and uh, to be. To be here, and uh, of course, engineering is close to my heart. I uh, also must echo the words of Minister State and Holden when he says he feels a real sense that the innovative research being conducted here will have many applications and great benefits for all the uh, This state of the art facility is a resource for both students and industry to explore new ventures and opportunities in the medical technology field and system innovation is a priority for the Canadian government. 
And the searches here at the Centennial are helping to digitize healthcare delivery and explore various health technology solutions that are critical to the principle of Canadian healthcare. And also, you have demonstrated here a lot of new technologies that we are doing in the electronics field, in the, 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 the other in the bioengineering, and so on. But that is great to hear and great to see these great achievements. Indeed, Centennial has. You know, it's already leading the way in public private partnerships in the medical device industry. With 60 companies engaged and 40 products developed, 30 of which have been sent to market in the last five years. I think that these are great achievements and uh, uh, that, that is demonstrating the, the applied science and, applied science and technology here that we are involved in and the remarkable results that the Central and College is having. As Minister of State for the nation, the College and Community Innovation for the CCI program will invest more than 40 million in 34 Canadian colleges across the country, including Centennial. This investment also includes support for colleges to push specialized research equipment. And I have seen your laboratories, you have an excellent equipment, but we are, our government is taking care to have more like that. The highest of the technology in the world. For the Ministry de l'État, Border, La Mesione, the Programme d'Innovation of the Colleges and the Communique versus the Crown Million de Dollars dans 34 colleges. Can it be for two of the communities of the year? Set investment for Crown from CTA. To penetra or college that stay the material the research specialization. On behalf of the government of Canada, I am pleased to announce an investment of 1.75 million dollars to help foster innovative collaboration between Centennial students and the local technologies, medical technology. <laughs> I have my colleagues, the Minister of State, and my colleague Roxanne James, to participate, but it's important that I'm in uh, the, the life of the uh, Centennial College. Centennial College is receiving this CCI Technology Access Centers grant. This money will go toward establishing the wearable, interactive, and mobile technologies access center in healthcare. We need that. For sure. The research and testing center will develop new mobile and wearable health devices that will give patients and their healthcare providers real time information about their health status. Mobile technologies will allow people to be more proactive in taking care of their health while improving the outcomes and reducing costs. These devices will also help people in remote areas without needing their access to a physician. Mobile health technologies developed in Canada can be sold around the world, helping to gain jobs here at home. Folks, you heard Minister of Stakeholder call to spend the investments and win win both for industry and competitiveness of our colleges. Actually, I think this is really a win win win. For example, the support we are providing here at Centennial College will also have positive effects throughout the greater Toronto area and the South of area. Furthermore, new medical technologies and techniques will help us to drive down healthcare costs in Ontario and across Canada. With the number of seniors living in Ontario expected to double in the next 10 years, the cost saving innovation they pioneered by Centennial students and business partners cannot come soon enough. I would like to congratulate everyone here at Centennia College and also thank you for all that you do each and every day. Je tiens à féliciter tout le personnel du Collège Centennia et à vous remercier du travail extraordinaire que vous accomplissez au quotidien. Not only is your work powering innovation and strengthening our economy, but it is also bringing great benefits to our community and indeed to all Canadians. 
Thank you very much, Sean, and Pete from the New Prison for delivering that uh, fantastic announcement for today. And also, as well, Minister Holder, for taking time out of your very busy schedule, far busier than mine, to come all the way to Scarborough for uh, today's announcement. Very much appreciated. It is now my honor to introduce uh, our last speaker for today's announcement. Uh, I was told earlier that uh, she needs no introduction because everyone's going to know her. Uh, I brought her the title, though, because MC, I have to uh, read the official title. So please join me in welcoming uh, Trish Bryden uh, to the podium, who is the Associate of Vice President Research and Corporate Planning here at Centennial College. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you very much, Dr. Jones. And a big thank you to our great friends in our home neighborhood, and he rocks and James from Scarborough Center, and Nikki from Shizu from uh, Pickering at Scarborough East, and of course, our hometown boy, they can't take Scarborough. Uh, the Honorable and Holder Minister of State for Science and Technology from the great writer of London. For coming to Centennial today and to spend so much time with our students and our faculty. It was wonderful, so appreciated by them. And I, I, I bring you greetings and heartfelt thanks from our president and CEO, and Laura, from our VP academic, uh, Sandra Murphy, and from our uh, chief of staff, Noah Scott, all of whom could not be here today because of previous engagements, but they are as delighted as we are. And we so welcome and are honored to be awarded this federal grant to establish our wearable interactive and mobile technology access center, yes, in healthcare and boys in health called WIMTAC. It takes a village to raise a WIMTAC and you're in this room. Look around, faculty, students, staff who have worked so tirelessly, our new manager for our WIMTAC, Panima Tiagi. Thank you, Panima, stand up, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. At Centennial College, we believe that innovation and entrepreneurship are relevant to every sector of our economy and are therefore everyone's possibility. If innovation and entrepreneurship, as uh, our uh, guests here said today, are to become part of an integral feature of our national culture and not just an option for a chosen few. Then we must embed them broadly as values and skill sets, and we must have goals that allow for social innovation, creating entrepreneurs who go beyond commerce towards advancing a civil society for Canada. Our new wearable, interactive, and mobile technologies access center, our WIMTAC, will do just that. Through the federal government's investment in our WIMTAC, we will expand our capacity and proven expertise in creating and delivering to market these exciting new technologies. And we will work with our business partners who will become more innovative, more productive, and create more employment and greater opportunities for entrepreneurs and for the creation of new companies, and for our students to have extraordinary experiential learning and to become graduates in the workforce at Canada's future. These new mobile and interactive technologies will also change our lives and help us transform how we manage and participate in our own health and wellness. Code Tech, who you referred to, Minister, will be creating more uh, shoes from the 3D scanner technology, which will, uh, we hope, take this technology for comfortable shoes and good fitting upwear across Canada and across the world. Bird Lab, with whom we will develop and commercialize innovative wearable sensors that can track high speed movements and assist older adults. I can help you wait. We pay no mobility <laughs> limitation in order to implement hands free computer access. And if you give us glasses free on the too. And Bike Bank Media to provide outstanding mobile interactive systems to enable dentists and medical professionals to better serve their patients' needs. Smart Teacher, we're helping them create new games and biosensors that help us to teach and learn more effectively. And we have our colleagues from Scarborough Hospital here today, where we will be working with them in creating new services and applications in patient care. With our regional economic development partners like Venture Lab and Mars, we know that there are over 300 companies waiting in our funnel to be able to come and commercialize their products and work with us. Minister, members of parliament, your investment could not be more timely or more important. And we make this commitment to you today. 
that through your investment and with our industry and community partners and our incredibly talented faculty, employees, students, Centennial and College's wearable, interactive, and mobile technology access center for healthcare, our WinTech, we will utilize this additional innovation and commercialization capacity wisely. With vision and passion, with confidence and accountability, with health and well-being of all Canadians. Thank you so very much. I want to tell the opportunity for uh, photo ops with some teams with the two MPs and our minister, and then there will be an immediately followed by a media scrum. But we have a very tight, tight period of time on this, and then there are also refreshments, and I hope a few minutes at least for you to have an opportunity to meet our wonderful guests here today. Thank you. So, we can come this way for photo opportunities. Thank <laughs> you. 